What's up guys, welcome back. In this video we are doing example number four of column buckling. So in this example we have a rectangular column uh, that's fixed at one end and it's pinned at the other end, but this pin only works in one direction. Basically it's in the for buckling in the YZ plane, uh, the column sees this connection as a pin, but for buckling in the XZ plane, there's really nothing stopping it from swinging out if it was to buckle, so the column sees this as just being free to buckle in the XZ plane. So when we look at, uh, if we go back to a couple videos ago, as always, um, we had these uh, situations up here. So in the case of a, a fixed, let's do a, a fixed connection at the bottom and a pin at the other end, uh, then the effective length that we're going to be using in our peak critical formula is 0 0.7 times the actual length of that column. And then for a column that's fixed on one end and free at the other end, we're using effective length of two times the actual length. So depending on uh, which, which way we're considering buckling to go in, we're going to have to use each of those. So maybe let's write those out. We'll just say that we have um, uh, our effective length for the YZ plane. Uh, this is going to be where we have a fixed pin connection, so that will be equal to 0.7L and 0 0.7 times times 3 there is just 2.1 meters. Alright, now our effective length that we're going to be using in the XZ plane is uh, was 2L for the fixed and free connection and uh, so just 2 times, so we'll even write that 2L, so that's just going to be equal to 6 meters. All right, let's go and grab this expression up here. Uh, we are going to need the moments of inertia about the x-axis and the y-axis, and we've already calculated those in previous videos for this exact cross-section, so I won't bore you with those. And we're just gonna plug them into the p-critical expression. So let's just give us, uh, let's, we have to do this for each possible direction for buckling. So let's check the y-z plane first, and that's gonna give us the subscript i-y, because it'll be buckling uh, in this way or that way. So basically if the, from the top-down view it's a, about the y-axis there is the moment of inertia that we're concerned about. Uh, so when we plug all that in we just get it to be equal to 12 kilonewtons. And now we just want to check for buckling uh, in the xz plane. So let's just bring this down here and we'll add in our subscripts. So we're looking for p critical in the xz plane which means we're dealing with the moment of inertia about the x-axis and then again, this is the effective length for the x, z plane. All right. So when we just plug in all the values that we already have, we find that to be 5.9 kilonewtons. And 5.9 is smaller than 12. So when we look at this, the actual p-critical that we're going to get for this column is 5.9 kilonewtons. We're going to be getting buckling in the x, z plane before we get buckling in the y, z plane. Um, the other thing that we can do here is we can just check the allowable load if we want based on the factor of safety. So let's just write it down here. We have factor of safety is equal to the ultimate load over the allowable load. So if we just rearrange for the allowable load, we will just get the ultimate load, which is 5.9 kilonewtons, divided by our factor of safety, which was 2.5. And that's going to give us an allowable load for this column uh, of 2.95 kilonewtons. This is equal to P allowable. All right, so let's throw a box around that one as well. That's our allowable load. And the last thing that we want to do here is we just want to check to make sure that the column doesn't yield before it buckles. Uh, we've been doing this in the previous video, so all we do is we have uh, we know that our, our yield stress is equal to basically just the, the force over area, and that force is the force that would cause this material to yield. So if we just rearrange for P, uh, we're going to get our yield stress, which is 250, so we have 250 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared, times uh, 800, well this actually, that should write it up here, the area is is equal to 20 times 40, so that's 800 millimeters. Squared. So in uh, in units of meter squared, that's just 800 uh, times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. So if you just multiply those two together, we're going to find that the force is 200,000 newtons, or yeah, in kilonewtons, that's just 200 kilonewtons. So 200 kilonewtons is way bigger than 5.9 kilonewtons. 
and uh, it makes sense. This is an extremely slender column. When we're looking at this, uh, it's only two centimeters by four centimeters uh, in its cross-sectional area or cross-sectional dimensions, and it's three meters long. So no wonder this thing is going to buckle uh, way sooner than, uh, than it yields.